I take my hat off to him just for stepping in the ring and being courageous enough to go back at it. Been knocked out twice in his last three losses. And, you know, the funny thing is, he came in the meeting, and one of the first things he said was talking about the first round knockout by Yuri Ocas Camboa. He goes, hey, I never saw the punch coming, but I've seen it nine times on YouTube. So. <laughs> Damn that hit the net. Yeah. <laughs> it was a classic punch as you mentioned earlier, Steve. <laughs> but he came back and beat Benjamin Flores in his next fight and seems to be showing no effects tonight. Even though Fonseca's taking it to him. Seeker's standing in there. Seeker's reaching with a nice right hand to the body. I think he's landed a couple times last round and he's back back at it on this round. I still like to see him move a little bit more like that to his left. But Seeger is walking in a little more this round after having success last round without doing that. He may be starting to feel a little pressure getting late in the fight, and he might feel he's behind. I think his corner said that he's still in the fight. Well, he told us at some point he knew in tonight's fight he was going to have to fight rather than just box. Which he has a tendency to be more of a boxer than a fighter, but he knew that in order to beat Fonseca, he was going to have to actually have a fighter's chance. And he did, he did some fighting early on, but I think right now it would be in his best interest if he stuck with boxing and the moving. He's picking him off outside. Oh, a good right hand. Maybe Seager's best punch of the fight. Catches him with the left as well. He's definitely got the respect of uh, Victor Fonseca right now. As soon as Victor's backing up, retreating, slow down a little bit. Exactly. Seeger seems a little energized. Now you can see him constantly using the jab to set up the big right hand, which has been effective for him in this fight, in this round. Consecutive round after round after round of Fonseca being the victor. Right. Al Seeger has come back in the last two. Take a breath. You gotta take it easy. He's not better than you. Listen to me. He doesn't have anything. He's getting tired. Listen to me. Listen to me. You got to throw. You got to throw. You want to win? You want to win? We work so hard. Let's work. Let's work. We got to work. Don't. You can see Seeger anxious almost to get out there and get started again. He should be the way he's fought the last two rounds. But second's got to start moving his gloves. I mean, he, his last round, a uh, decent left hand, but he didn't throw uh, three, four meaningful punches last round. No, and it was a little bit of desperation in Fonseca's uh, corner, but I didn't hear him give him any stern instructions. Well, he was effective there, a couple of body punches, and then coming to the head. Same situation. That second slowed down. He really has since the opening round. And, and his punch output right now is, is, is real low. I don't think he's throwing 40 shots around. But for with this weight class, that's no good. Those straight right hands to the body might have something to do with that. <laughs> that's true. It's, when Seeker started doing that, Antonio, that's when he started landing right hands up top as well. Well, this is this is Fonseca's first TV exposure, and, and I have to say I'm a little underwhelmed. <laughs> well, he's had a couple of rounds there where it looked like he was going to be an aggressor, but he never was able to really put anything into combinations. 
got it. Well, he's got a tape issue here. Foot on the road, does Fonseca. They want to cut some of that tape off there on his right glove. They come loose. Time in. Time in. Well, he's sporting a 16 and 0 record. And, uh, oh, good right hand. I'm sorry there by Al Seal Collins. Great right hand. You might want to think that, that maybe conditioning might have something to do with why he's slowing down. I mean, he's used to getting guys out of there, and he's gone 12, 10 rounds before. Since his last seven fights have gone this far, though, for the eighth round, so I don't think he's got the fatigue factor yet, but maybe the point that Steve was making earlier, those body shots that you were making, starting to take effect. And while there hasn't been a lot of coaching, this has not been a physical fight at all. He should not be tired. Cut it out. Let's go. Let's go. Now it's the left glove where the tape job has come undone. Time in. Well, this has been a tale of two fights. Really, Wait, no punch, no punch. After the opening round, kind of size up another up. I'll take it for the next three rounds with the dominant fighter connecting almost at will. And now it's turned the other way. And Seeker seems to be able to do what he wants. And that's right. What I don't get is when, when Fonseca seemingly had had his man figured out. That's when he let his foot off the pedal. Maybe this is where Fonseca belongs, because he's been the aggressive fighter inside. Time. Hey, one more time. I'm going to take the point. Right, he gets a warning there. Once again, he punch after they were broken up, and that one at the bell. He's marked above and below both eyes, bleeding from the nose. It hasn't been a particularly physical fight in the sense that they haven't been fighting on the inside. But look at Fonseca with that head. When they have been close, Fonseca's been much more aggressive, a little bit more chippy, too. You see, again, a clash of heads there. Has nothing to do with Southpaw versus righty. It's just two guys on the inside, and one is Fonseca's much more aggressive, both with his hands and his head. Took a look at the end of the round. The first time all around they were on the inside, and it was Fonseca doing the punching again. Left hand landed there. And that's a warning that he received from Ruben Carriota, a referee, and that's happened a couple of times. Wanted to make sure that he knows. He said, Whee! next time you do it, I'm going to take one away. And there they go once again, just at the breakup. Well, they tell us before the fight, protect yourself at all times. <laughs> These guys are toe-to-toe -to -toe right now. Fonseca's got him locked up with his right hand and landing blows with the left. You can see the blood beginning to flow underneath that left eye of Al Seager. I, his left eye is beginning to swell. And he has a cut on it, under it. And Steve, like you mentioned earlier, Victor Fonseca definitely gets the best of him. Al Seger, if, when they're inside, yeah, close. Let's go, let's go. If Al Seger quit, it looks like he just yelled, get off me. <laughs> you know, he seems so uncomfortable on the inside. And now we've gone back to Fonseca being the aggressor here and chasing Seger around the ring. Fighting this fight from close inside. Carrion breaks it up again. Yeah, Fonseca knows. Big left hand landed that time by Fonseca. And Seger trying to hang on. In the corner. Pick him up, pick him up. See, they're so bent over, an uppercut would be the right punch. Get off, wait. Get off the head, get off the head. Let's go. I mean, Victor is, he, is just mauling him right now. That was a great, great left hand. He's hurt. He's, Seager is in trouble. Put with the left hand, he goes down. You could see that one coming. The damage was done in the opposite corner. Seager tried to get away, but couldn't run. As far as Seager finishes him off. Okay. 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 And the face.
face of Al Seeger says it all. He fought, stayed in this fight, was an aggressor for quite a bit, but took a lot of punishment, particularly there in that ninth and final round. Okay, very uneven fight. You know, uh, Seeger, I thought maybe won the sixth, seventh, and eighth. Yes. Got even on my card. Look at his face and look what happened in that ninth round. He definitely looks worse for Will. Victor Fonseca now 17 now with nine knockouts. As he cleans that clean, perfect record. And said he wanted to come out and have a spectacular performance tonight. I don't know if it was spectacular, but it was an impressive finish. It definitely was. I mean, he just really worked hard inside. It seems as if Al Sega forgot the fight when they were in close. Two tall guys, Kurt. One of them able to adjust by fighting on the inside. The other one not able to adjust. And Seeger pretty much lost when they were in close. You can see the combatants hugging. Oh, man. <laughs> and here's the finish. Seeger on the defensive here. His hands are low. Straight left hand does a lot of damage. Referee didn't even wait for Seeger to drop, and the fight was over. A lot of damage had been done up to that point. That's a very nice straight left there. And when a fighter turns away from his opponent, he might as well stop the fight because he's done. Seeger seemed to lose it pretty quickly there. One more look at the end. Again, Seeger, when your hands are down and you're hurt, there's no way you're going to stop the punches coming. And so Victor Fonseca is victorious, victorious with the technical knockout. Here to make everything official. As our ring Ladies and gentlemen, referee Ruby and Cadillon stops the contest at 1 minute 41 seconds of the ninth round for your winner Woo! by technical knockout and new NABF and NABO Super Bantamweight Champion, Victor Bettino Fonseca! on a technical knockout in the ninth round and needed to do that because if you look at the judges' scorecards, Al Seeger was actually ahead on two of the cards. And so those last couple of rounds that Seeger was able to come out and be the aggressor is certainly working to his advantage. Unfortunately, he couldn't keep it going. Well, Seeger, 79-73. That's hard for me to imagine. I had it 76-76, same as Rafael Ramos. But 79-73, that means uh, Kelly Yo gave Fonseca, what, one round, one one or two rounds? Right. And, uh, early on, Fonseca was doing the clean and crisp punching, and Seeger wasn't, so I don't understand that part, but very interesting that Fonseca needed that knockdown and that knockout to win the fight at that point. Need it and got it. Coming up next, Freddie Hernandez, focused and prepared like no other time. Damian Frias, stepping up in class and planning to break through. Hernandez, Frias, it's our welterweight main event scheduled for 10 rounds. The highly anticipated Super 6 World Boxing Classic Super Middleweight Tournament started off this past weekend with a bang. In the opening bout from Berlin, Germany, a pair of former world champions battled it out when hard-punching King Arthur Abraham and former undisputed middleweight title holder Jermaine Taylor began this world tour. Taylor controlled the opening rounds with his quick jab and overall boxing skills.